Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. O come, let us worship. Our processional hymn is the hymn, O Come, All Ye Faithful. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels, O come let us adore him. together the call it for purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The collect for Christmas Eve is found on page 107, together with the gospel at the bottom of the page. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with short confidence behold him when he shall come again to be our judge. 
who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lesson. The lesson is written in the ninth chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the lesson. The Christmas anthems are found in the prayer book beginning on page 104. Let us say together the Christmas anthems. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Lord. Now it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and are of peace, good will toward men. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not to be, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made. 
who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, the Virgin of Mary, and was made a man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sat on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one, one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Maybe you know something of the story of John Forbes Nash, Jr. It was told a number of years ago in the movie A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly. As you may know, the real-life John Nash was a brilliant mathematician who, very early in a very promising career at MIT, began to suffer from paranoid schizophrenia. So even as his professional career and reputation was growing after a decade of remarkable achievements, his personal life was falling apart. Nash suffered a very public breakdown. One day, he interrupted a lecture to announce that he was on the cover of Life magazine disguised as Pope John XXIII. He knew that because 23 was his favorite prime number. He believed that all men who wore red ties were part of a communist conspiracy against him. He claimed that foreign governments were communicating with him secretly through the pages of the New York Times. And he turned down a prestigious post at the University of Chicago because, as he said, he was about to become the emperor of Antarctica. In the end, he was forced to resign his academic position, and he spent most of the next decade in and out of hospitals, pretty much forgotten by just about everyone. Even his wife found the pressure too much to bear. After years of suffering through the peaks and valleys of harsh treatments and bitter relapses, Alicia Nash divorced her husband and tried to build a new life until 1970, when she had a change of heart. She felt that John's repeated hospitalizations had been a mistake. She decided to let him move back in with her, and she promised never to commit him to hospital again. And that proved to be the turning point in his recovery. Without that, Nash would have likely ended up dying on a street somewhere, like some unwanted feral cat or dog unmissed and unlamented. But with Alicia's support, with the love and support of someone who refused to give up in, on him, of someone who refused to give in to fear, of someone who refused to throw him away like a piece of unwanted trash as he had been pretty much thrown away by almost everyone else, with the love and support of his wife, he began to rebuild his life and his career. And in the meantime, remarkably, the world of economics was beginning to catch up with some of the groundbreaking theories that he had been developing 30 years earlier. His ideas regarding something called game theory came to have applications in a wide range of situations. Beginning in the 1960s, economists began to successfully apply game theory to real-life situations, and at the center was Nash's theory of equilibrium. By the 1980s, Economists began to expect that game theory would be recognized with the Nobel Prize. But year after year, it didn't happen. The committee in Stockholm could not imagine giving the Nobel Prize in, a field, in that field without acknowledging and including John Nash as one of the recipients. But members of the committee were worried that Nash was unstable, that he wouldn't be able to handle the pressure of the ceremony. Some even feared that he might embarrass the academy. But John Nash proved all of their fears unfounded. 
Surrounded by his wife's love, he began to draw himself out of his schizophrenia. Gradually, in little, little tiny steps, he thought his way out of his delusions, reestablishing a whole new relationship with reality. And in 1994, he and two other men were awarded the Nobel Prize in economics. All because someone loved him enough to reach out. All because someone loved him enough to pull him back when he did not have the strength to pull himself back. In the words of Sylvia Nasser, his biographer, Alicia's love didn't just save his career, it saved his life. Because she refused, she refused to just throw him away. Like a piece of unwanted trash. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. We live in a world in which just about everything has become disposable. If we're bored with it, if it doesn't work perfectly, if we think that there's something better at the store, we just toss it out and we get something new. Sometimes, I'm afraid, even people. The incarnation of Jesus Christ, the entrance of God into the full life of humanity, flesh and blood, is God's radical declaration that you matter, that every person matters. The incarnation of God in Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, this mystery of Christmas, tells us that no matter who has ever rejected us, no matter who has ever tried to throw us away, no matter what doubts people may have had of us, or what we have ever done to warrant their judgment. God does not throw us away, ever. In fact, he is born precisely so that we might not be thrown away. His love is a love which redeems us, a love that tells us that we are embraced by God forever, a love so great that God reaches down to us to be born as us. And if that is true for you and for me, then it must be also true for others. Imagine how knowing that about ourselves and about each other at the same time has the power to change every relationship, every interaction, every decision that we'll ever make. The magic of Christmas has little to do with images of cuddly lambs or bright angels, as much as they may have become an indispensable part of our celebration. The true magic of Christmas has to do with the amazing gift of God himself in the birth of a child. A gift that, if we think about what it really means, ought to take our breath away. So above all things, I wish to declare to you this holy and blessed day, that which we might easily forget, that this baby in a manger is the Son of God. The message of the angel is that message of hope without which life would be unlivable. The hope that it, the course of human history, the course of our bitter, broken, and divided human story has been reversed by the only one who had the power to reverse it. It is God himself who enters our story, who enters history on Christmas Eve in the birth of his son. And he comes to declare clearly and loudly that in him sadness will be turned into joy, sin will be vanquished, sorrow and pain will be healed, and death will, become, will be overcome once and for all by resurrection. That's the good news. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which shall come to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed all might, majesty, honor, glory, dominion, and power, this day and forevermore. Amen. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thy home. We offer this Holy Eucharist to the praise and glory of Almighty God and thanksgiving for the incarnation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, born for us in human flesh that we might live with God forever. Let us pray this day for Christian people throughout the world as they celebrate this most holy time. And let us pray for our witness to the new life we have in Jesus Christ, knowing that in Him we have been offered eternity. Let us pray for all of God's people, praying, Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the mystery of the Word made flesh, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the birth in time of the timeless Son of God, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the revelation of God's love for us and for all humanity in the gift of his Son, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. grant that the faithful might receive the incarnate Son, that his life might give life to all, that his wisdom might enlighten all, and that his love might envelop all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. grant that the sick might be raised up by his power, that the departed might rest in Christ, that the lonely and sorrowful might know his presence. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Grant that the kingdoms of this world might become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that all people might be transformed by his peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. let us remember in our prayers all those who are this day ill in body and mind, remembering Dorothy, Anna, Megan, Brian, Lee, Ruth, Lloyd, Donna, John, Karen, Wanda, Cynthia, Eva, Gail, Edmund, Mary, Esther, Simone, Maureen, Derwin, Griffin, Dale, Tom, Christopher, Eleanor, Kelly, Kevin, Rael, Marie, Pius, Cedric, Jerry, Debbie, Scott, Sarah, Ben, Michael, Pat, Philip, Terry, Aiden, Lisa, Brenda, Wayne, Alan, Charles, Adam, Eric, Martin, Paige, Shane, Rochelle, Sherry, Randy, Grace, Maxine, Melanie, Matt, Sheila, Paul, Gerald, Franklin, Hudson, Suvro, Shelley, Joey, John, Jennifer, Michael, Kathy, Patty, Muriel, Brian, Wilma, Doris, Aunt Ger Aunt Gary, David and Vicki, and Teresa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways to say, remembering Chelsea, Judy, Aaron, Courtney, Linda and Mary, Vanda, Wendy, Martha, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Joseph, Carol, David, Shauna, Ethel, Evelyn, Sam, Mabel, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sandra, Sheridan, Ralph, Gerard, Carissa, Deanna, Sandra, Heather, Kenny, Sean, and Brenda. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And let us remember this day all the faithful departed, especially Morris Chown, Murray Pond, Shirley Fowler, Merle Hunter, Louis Sear, Cecil Johnson, and Duane Earl. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, or word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, 
Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heart deep repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is easy and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Because thou hast given Jesus Christ, thine only Son, be born as at this time for us, who by the operation of the Holy Spirit was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, his mother, and that without spot of sin, to make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy has given thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded us. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercy to accept this, our sacrifice of praise, and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. 
And we pray by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, thy woman, with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so we to the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell with him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, Grant us thy peace. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Shed for you, preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. The great consideration is that Christ's blood was shed for you and your household. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for you, preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. The great consideration is that Christ's blood was shed for you and your household. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
We most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer to present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merit, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is the hymn, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare the room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heavenly. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and plots, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love the lord be with you and with thy spirit let us go forth in peace alleluia alleluia in the name of the lord alleluia alleluia